This structure of a neuron that uh, we have in the computer, the perceptron, basically works like this. You have a set of values. So for example, if you're trying to predict rain, okay, x1 might be the temperature, x2 might be the air pressure, xn x might be um, temperature, air pressure, the humidity of the air, for example okay and there are other variables in between now each of these variables is assigned a weight so some variables are more important than others in terms of predicting rain now because we can't exactly predict rain perhaps with these weights here we're always going to have some error that is kind of capturing this weight which which is basically whatever we can measure with this we compensate with this one that's kind of the notion. We'll see how this actually happens. What happens is, once you have the values for these variables, so for example, on one uh, instance, we might have, on one instance, we might have, for example, um, the uh, temperature is 70 degrees. So x1 is 70. X2 is the air pressure, which is 123, whatever the units are, and and then Xn, which is basically um, what do we say it was? Uh, the humidity is 50%. Okay. This will have a weight, W1, W2 to Wn, and then there's going to be a dummy W0 here. What you'll do is you multiply each of the weights by its corresponding variable. So if, say, weight 1 is 0.2, weight 2 is 0 0.03, and so on and so forth, and then weight n is 0 0.5, and of course we have weight 0, right? So, and then say weight 0 is what you will do is just you leave weight 0, you multiply that by 1, because we have that x0 is 1, multiply that by 1, plus, plus x170 by weight 1, plus x2 by 0 times 0, 0, 003, plus, and so on. Okay, so you multiply each value by its weight, corresponding weight. You add it all together. Now, there's an output function here that says this is going to be positive or 1. If this, that sum is greater than 0, it's going to be negative or negative 1 otherwise. Okay? This is basically what this says. There's an output function of a number of inputs, and the result is 1 if the if that multiplication is greater than zero, negative one otherwise. Or as vectors, you can say there's an output function of a vector of values where it's one if the dot product between the weights and the vec and the values is greater than zero, or uh, negative one otherwise. Now, a little bit about what is this doing? If you think of it as two variables, we're trying to find basically the equation of a straight line okay that can best classify that can best divide the example so for example if this is just temperature and air humidity humidity of the air then and this indicates that it's going to rain and this negative indicates that it's not raining well perhaps in one two three four five six days that i've observed this is what I observe, and you can see that we can throw a straight line that perfectly splits these examples. Perceptrons actually are a way of finding a straight line that divides uh, examples. Now, when you have more than three dimensions, you're not finding a line, you're finding a plane. But it's about, it's basically the intuition is the same. A perceptron tries to find uh, something that is linearly separable, okay? Now there are functions that are more complicated. For example, this one, you can't just uh, you can't separate this linearly. I mean, if you try to throw a line here, right? That's not you're separate. You have equal number of positive and negative cases on one side or the other. 
Now you might compromise and separate like this, right? Where you have the positives you're not classifying very well because there's a positive on each side, but the negatives, they're all in the same side. So you're you're pretty much classifying the negatives well. This but whatever whichever line you throw, this is not gonna arrive at a good classification. Uh, what happens though is that you can network many perceptrons to actually find this the solutions to these complex functions. Now, how do you find the weights? This is the key of the whole of the whole perceptron idea, is how to find the weights. So say for example you have some training example. So temperature, humidity, and then air pressure, and whether it's going to rain, yes or no. And you have the temperature is 70 degrees, the humidity is 8%, the air pressure is 123 millibars, whatever that, and it's, it rains. Uh, on the other case, the temperature is 80 degrees, the humidity is 45%, the air pressure is, I don't know, 103, and it doesn't rain. And you might have a third example where the temperature is 65 degrees, the humidity is 99%, which means basically it's raining, the pressure is whatever, and it's raining. Say these are your examples. The way we're going to try to find the um, the weights is by using something called the perceptron training rule, which is something used to a train the perceptron, but it's also the inspiration of many other trainings for many for many other machine learning uh, algorithms that are quite important. Um, the way this works is you set all the weights all the W sub i is to some random value. And then what you will do is you go through all of the examples, okay, and for each example that you uh, process in the neuron, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll process these examples multiplying this by its weight, this by its weight, and this by its weight. And you will see whether it produces a 1 or a negative 1. Sorry, this should be negative 1. A 1 or a negative 1, right? Now, if it produces, um, if it produces, for example, if this example produces a one, then that example was correctly classified, and probably that weight is okay, right? Now, what we want to find though is the variation of the different weights. So what we're going to do is for each weight. Okay, after we process all of the examples, after we process all of the examples, for each, uh, after we process one example, I'm sorry, after we process one example, for each weight, we're going to update it. We're going to say this is the same weight plus the, a delta wi, where delta wi is basically the target value in the first, in the case of the first line is 1, minus the output. Okay, whatever the output was, could be one or negative one. We subtract these two. Okay, now we multiply that by, in this case, 70, the x sub i value. Okay, we multiply that by the x sub i value. So, whatever the difference, so for example, if it was the same value, it's zero, right? Zero here. So, if my neural network said one and the example also said one, that basically means t is 1 because that's the truth and my output was 1 this is 0 and the delta w becomes 0 so the weight for this variable gets no no update okay basically because it was good now if the values were not the same this difference is going to be uh, say if it's 1 and the value is negative 1 that's going to get it's either going to be negative 1 or, um, or positive 1. Okay, so what happens is that you multiply that by the, by the x, which is 70. That's a pretty high value. But then there's this eta here that is the learning rate, which basically makes it smaller. So 
the updates don't happen by a lot. What happens when you update the weights by a lot is that you can you can you can overshoot your function and not find the optimum, but go over the optimum into finding something else. So by making the the updates have a, a factor that makes them smaller, so for example, eta here is a small constant, like 0.1, you actually uh, make sure that the updates are happening gradually as opposed to uh, bluntly. Okay. And what happens is you iterate through all the examples and for all the weights you do this rule. Okay, you, you keep updating this rule all the time. So at the end of one iteration you will have several weights. You do this again and you do this again and again and again until you get as close as you can as, as to producing the target function for, all, for as most examples as you can. Okay, at some point you're going to be updating this and you're not going to get any better at, at predicting the target value. That's probably when you stop. Okay, so it can be proven that this, uh, that this perception training rule converges if the training data is linearly separable and if eta is sufficiently small. Again, if you're doing this via small steps. Another way to, um, to understand this is to consider a simpler uh, linear unit, right? So a perception where its output is the weight 0 plus the weight times the values for all of them. What we can do is try to find the weights that minimize the squared error. That's another way of thinking about this, and this is called the gradient descent. Okay, this is another way of training the perception. You find the weights that minimize the squared error. The squared error is basically how different are the function, the target function, from the actual values that this thing is predicting. So again, another very popular perceptual training rule, this is the intuition, is the squared error, minimizing the squared error. This is the expected weights should be one half of the training the um, the target function of the training examples minus the output with your so far trained uh, neuron that that subtraction the same subtraction as above as the uh, previously squared and you sum this for all for all training examples little d is a training example so you sum all these you divide them by two and that is your expected um, uh, weights vector. Now this is the squared error, this is your expected error with these weights. And you try to minimize this function. Okay, that's what you're trying to do. That's why you actually update the weights w with some multiplication of, the, of this error, of some variation of this error, but you're trying to minimize this error function. Um, one more note in the error. If you notice, I mean basically will happen is when if you instead of using negative one and one you use one and zero for positive or negative this in the end becomes you know however many different values are there right whichever is different squared when when the values are the same the target and the output from the neuron are the same this is, this is zero right so basically this is just a sum of how many examples you got wrong Okay, because when you got them right, these are going to be zero. So this sum is going to tell you how many examples you got wrong. Okay, and that is again the error. Now the gradient descent. The idea is that the delta of the weights is some learning factor times the difference in the, in the, in the expected error. Okay, in the expected error. We call it gradient because it's a difference, and difference are deri uh, derivatives, but derivatives. Uh, but don't worry too much about that. What I'm trying to say here is that we're we're going to try to find a function that tries to find an error that's here, here tries to minimize at each time. It's going to minimize the error, the error, the error until it goes to this like belly, right? Which is the local, the, the which is the minimum, right? Minimum possible error. We're trying to get to that. To that uh, point. 
And the training rule again is to find an eta multiplied by this error. Okay, an eta basically of the difference of the error for that weight, the delta that you find. So if we just follow these equations, you will get basically you will you will realize that the uh, the derivative of e with respect to the a given weight is for all training examples the difference between the truth the ground truth and the outputted value times the actual value of that input which is basically what we saw on the perception rule and here's the um, here is the, the, the algorithm of the gradient descent, or the perception training rule. Each training example is a pair of the form values, a vector of values, and a target value, where x is the vector of input values and t is the target output value. Eta is the learning rate, for example, 0.05. You initialize each wi to some small random value, and until the termination condition is met, the termination condition can be, for example, you are not getting any better at classifying the examples, do initialize each w uh, each delta of wi to zero. Now for each training example, okay, do input the instance x to the perception and compute the output. Now for each linear unit weight wi, do the update rule. After you've done this for all the examples, for each linear unit weight wi, do this. Wi, it's going to be uh, the same Wi, I'm missing a W here, plus this delta. So first you go through all the examples and, comp and compute these deltas. And then for each weight, you add the delta to it. And that is the um, gradient descent or the perception training rule. Um, works if the training examples are linearly separable. Sufficiently small learning rate eta helps. Um, now, linear unit training rule uses gradient descent. It's guaranteed to converge to a hypothesis with a minimum squared error. Again, the learning r rate should be small. Even when the data, training data contains noise, this works. And even when the training data is not separable by the, by the hypothesis, it's still pretty good. 